Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In the previous video, we learned about how to add common supports in your WordPress theme. And in this video, we are going to look at the WordPress core to understand what goes under the hood, how does WordPress decides that it needs to show all the comments, how this whole thing works in a nutshell. Okay, so in the previous video, we established that we need to create a file called comments.php and then write all of these functions and markup in order for us to display the comments on the front end. And then we need to call the comments template function, which will go ahead and display all the comments for us. So how does this thing actually work? So let's, let's go over that. The first thing we're going to look at is the comments template function. So let's look at the WordPress core file. So WordPress is a core file, which is inside of WP includes, and the name of the file is comments template.php. So this is where all the magic happens for the comments and the function in specific we are looking for is the comments template function because that's the function we are calling. So we're starting from where it all originates from. Okay. So if we call a comments template function, let's say inside of the single dot PHP, uh, inside of this function, it basically looks for a file called comments.php. By default, if I don't pass anything here, okay, it's going to look for the comments.php file. So since I created the comments.php file, it's going to pick up that. But if you want to name it differently, you could. So if you look at the WordPress documentation, you can call the template something else also. So if I like create a new file, and just name it as short comments. I create this file and then I go back over here and over here I can pass the file address like short comments dot PHP. Then instead of the default file, which is comments dot PHP is going to pick up that file instead. Okay. So you could name the file differently if you want to. Okay. So that's, that's something it's going to look for. And then you have another parameter called separate comments, whether to separate comments by comments type and default is set to false. Then over here, it pulls the um, global variables like WP query with comments and all of these. It checks if whether or not you are on a single post page, a page, and if it's with comments, okay. And if the post is empty or not, okay. If any of these do not match, then it goes ahead and returns do an early return because we don't need to display it on any other page besides a single or his page, etc. Then um, if you haven't passed, of course, if you haven't passed this file name explicitly, you'll just use comments.php. So you'll look for that particular file. Then it'll look for different options. So whatever options you've passed here. So for example, whether or not the comment author must fill out the name and email. So this setting is going to get that from the option. So if you go to the database. And uh, if you go to the WP options table and then you search for the key called require name email, you can see that it's set to true. So one is true require name email. It gets the information about the current commenters in case we are logged in. Uh, it's going to know that uh, you is going to know your details like your name, email address, all of that. Okay. It's going to get the um, author name is going to get the email, etc. It's going to get the author URL. It has some arguments that you can uh, use. So by default, these are the arguments. Status is going to get all the comments where the status is approved. So the different settings that you have for comments in terms of the approval. So you can see you have these uh, check boxes like comments must be manually approved. So all of these settings are there. Like if somebody posts a comment on your blog post, you don't want it to be up here automatically because it could be a spam. It could be uh, something you don't want uh, your public users to see. So that's why they need to be approved. So by default, it's only going to show the all the comments that have approved status that have been approved by the admin. Okay, you have post IDs and all of these settings. Then it checks the option of the threaded comment. So in case uh, if you enable this enable threaded comments, and you go five level deep. Okay, so you can go however deep you want. So like if there are multiple replies of this for the same comment, it will go five nested levels. Okay. So, and you can change these settings from here. All right. So it's going to get that information again from the options table, whether or not uh, this option is checked. 
if it is checked is going to add another query arguments and that will be called threaded okay uh, for hierarchical otherwise it will set hierarchical to false so then that means if you don't enable this if i do this if i uncheck this and if i then save it and if i refresh now you can see that i'm not getting those threaded comments so comments are actually one below the other and i have to go to the next to in order for me to see the other comments okay so and this is the option that you have for the nested or threaded comments then it checks if you're logged in or not if the user is logged in okay so these are all things that's happening over here you can read more about it i won't be going over everything uh, but yeah uh, you can read through it and see how it's actually deciding and what needs to do setting different offsets so basically it's just adding different arguments for to prepare for the, it's preparing for the query and it's adding the arguments based on different settings you have provided from the back end if you're logged in or not if you've checked the thread comments or not right um if page comments is option is set to true or not so basis that is just adding different information setting the offset top level arguments okay and then it's going to do the comment query using the wp comment query function so it's going to instantiate the wp comment query class and it's going to do that query okay and once it does that query then it's going to so it's going to do the comments query and then here if the comments are hierarchical then it just loops through gets the children of that and then it's going to set all the query was on the page um it's going to check if the comments template constant is defined or not it's going to apply some filters so in case if you want to hook anything up at this point you could using this apply filter hook using this hook and then finally it checks if that file exists or not okay if the file exists that we are trying to access which is the comments.php by default or your custom file in case if you have passed uh, the file path over here then it's going to look for that file and it's going to require that file okay so you can see that it's actually requiring that file so so basically what this function is doing the main role of this function is to include that file but before it does that it goes ahead and sets up all of the query params and all of that uh for for the comments to be run on that particular page okay so coming back so we're done with the comments template function now let's look at the comments.php okay so in the previous episode we already looked at the post password required um we looked at all of this let's look at the wp list comments so what happens here so this function basically uh take some of the arguments by default these are your arguments and this function basically goes ahead and displays the list of the comments and it's used in the comments.php template all right so by default the arguments are like walker max step style by default it's ul so you will have ul li but if you want to change it to ordered list you could do that okay if you want to have like 1 2 3 listed in the comment you could use ol otherwise just don't pass this style key value as an argument and it'll automatically pick up the ul by default you have callback and callback page per page default avatar size is 32 but you can modify that by passing the avatar size value inside of this wp list comments argument uh, as an array inside of an array and then you have different um, options here uh, let's take a look at you have the short ping also which we saw which is whether to output short pings or not default is false okay so you can take a look at different arguments that are available and accordingly you can uh, go ahead and display your comments so here it passes those arguments is basically merges the default with yours and it's going to override whatever value so if you pass the avatar size to something else it'll just override that otherwise it'll just use whatever the defaults are there okay so it passes the arguments it figures out what comments will be looping through over here it checks if page or per page has been passed or not and does not match what's in wp query it performs a separate comment query and allow walker comment to paginate So again you can go deep into this and look at you know what all it's doing i think it's uh, most of the things are pretty self explanatory like checking if user is logged in or not adding the arguments whether or not to include 
approved or unapproved comments all of these okay all right here is getting the information about the thread comments is getting the maximum depth so this is the point where it checks what is the depth you have passed if you have passed five so that's what it's checking over here then finally uh, it's instantiating the walker comment class and it's calling the function called page walk and this function is basically responsible for displaying your comments you can see here it's actually calling the display element function so this is this function is basically responsible for producing a page of nested elements so i think that's that should be it i uh, won't be going too deep into it uh, but yeah basically calling that function getting the output and finally echoing or returning the output depending on you know what arguments you have passed whether the comments need to be echoed out or returned by default it echoes them all right so that's what happens in your um, WP list comments and I think these are the ones that I already explained in the previous video uh, you also have a common form function and inside of this function so this function is basically responsible for outputting a complete commenting form uh, for use within template and it accepts different arguments this is the post ID for which you want to generate the form for by default it'll use the uh, current post ID okay so you can see that is getting the post then doing an early return in case if the post uh, is not available or if the comments are not open getting the information about the current com commenter current user getting the format what format it should be on if the theme supports html5 checking if we require the name email or not so building the required attribute for the form right and then you have different fields so you create it's creating a field array for author you have this information for email you have label your input so the form that you see on the front end that's being generated i'd rather go on the non logged in piece so you can see these inputs so these inputs that you're looking at if you inspect element so you can see in uh, you have the comment form author uh, which is this class right here that is what is being displayed you have the label so this label is actually coming from here then you have the input for the author right so all that information required attribute will come uh, whether or not you have checked that option in the back end in in the wp admin as i've just shown you you have your email input you have your url so this website url that you're looking at right um, checks about the cookies whether or not to display that input again that's also a setting back there in the dashboard you can look at that now at this point it also allows you to hook up any of the other fields you want to add so that's why it's giving you the hook called common form default fields so fields will contain all the fields that have already been added on top depending on you know what options you've selected in the wordpress dashboard settings in the dashboard settings and uh, then it's going to take up all of the default and then if you want to go ahead and modify the form you could do that using this hook you have your defaults like comment field must log in logged in as comments notes okay so you have all of these fields it passes the arguments again if you want to hook something here at this point before the comment form you could latch onto this hook this is your response div okay so comment form title cancel comment this is the point it's going to print your form so you it's going to wrap it inside of the container form so if you look at here you can see this is the form method as post it uses the id of the form here is comment form the class and then uses the action arguments as action you can actually uh, pass this argument and change the action url also if you want to so you can modify these fields you, the id the comment form whether to pass the validate or not so if it's html5 then it's going to do no validate again another hook comment notes so it's going to put comment notes over here in case if you pass that as an argument so we'll put that value there this is where it's going to loop through all the common fields echo the comment notes after so you can keep going then finally you have the submit button that you're looking at so this one right here this is the submit button and finally end of the form okay 
And again, if, if you want to do something after this form, you can latch onto this hook. So you can see WordPress is giving you different hooks, like at different points. So if you want to make some updates, if you want to customize stuff, add more fields uh, or change something, then you could do that using those hooks. So that's why hooks are very powerful. So that's what the comment form does basically for you. And where are these comments stored? If you look at the database, if you go to the database under WP comments, if you click on WP comment, these are your, this is where the comments are saved. So you can see you have a comment, comment post ID. So this is for the post ID one, all of these comments, comment author, email, author URL, comment date, right? the content, whatever the comment has been posted, whether it's approved or not, if it's approved, this will be one. And uh, the comment type, etc., and all of these things, all right? It even gives you the agent, so where it's been posted from, like it was posted from my Mac, Intel, so that's what it's giving the information about. Cool, so I think that's about it. I hope you find this video helpful and um, informative. And uh, if you did like the video, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel. If you aren't already, please follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayyad. And start my repository to support my work. My repository name is Aquila. And do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Cody Tech. I'm going to see you in the next. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.